Uh, speaking of apostles of Jesus, I also read in the book that you mentioned Saint Peter was once possessed by a demon. Well, that that's a conjecture. The church has never spoken about that. Yes. <laughs> But. Uh... But there are some 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 uh, indications that that might be true. When Jesus mm -hmm. said, "Get behind me, Satan," uh, was he using that phrase metaphorically? Uh, mm -hmm. Whatever. I mean, obviously, at the end, Peter was the the faithful disciple and and completely freed of any demonic, and he died a holy death on a, an upside down cross. But uh, the, one of the and, and I had an exorcist, an exorcist, a senior exorcist, tell me he thought that at some point in the early that Peter was possessed before he was freed by the Lord. And so I was in an exorcism and and, uh, and uh, I had a, I had a relic and uh, and it was of it was of St. Peter. And I stuck the relic on him and I didn't show it. I didn't show it to him, I couldn't see it. I said, who is it? Jesus name, tell me. Peter, he said, he used wow. to be, he said, he used to be ours. <laughs> and then I said, not anymore. <laughs> so, what's the reply of the devil? <laughs> yeah, now the devil's a liar, so who knows? But but that way, that's what they said. I, I mean, it's not important. I mean, Jesus, uh, Peter was a faithful disciple, and and then yeah. Mary Magdalene was a faithful disciple, and Jesus cast the demons out of her. So, mm, amen. I heard Saint John Bosco was also possessed by the devil. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Was, did he have an early history of having demonic problems? I hear, I read this article that God allowed to possess. Oh. Yeah, there are cases where we believe that saints uh, during their lives were possessed by the devil as victim souls. They didn't do anything wrong. They were victim mm -hmm. souls that God allowed this for their sanctification and for, for the graces for the world. Uh, a clear case of that is Saint Mary of Jesus crucified, the little the little uh, Arab from, oh. from Lebanon. Yeah, she was possessed two or three times by the devil, which the Lord allowed for her sanctification for for graces for the world. So there are a few cases of this where uh, the devil has been allowed to uh, apparently possess the person mm -hmm. in some fashion. Ah, so same as case of Annalise Michel or also known as Emily Rose in the movie. Well, that that's a, a, a that's a more of a conjecture. Uh, she's not been canonized, of course. And mm. and was she a victim soul? I don't know. Some people believe so. It could be. Uh, mm. I, I really don't know for certain about that. Possibly. Possibly. Amen. And what do you think, for, uh, Monsignor, of your experience as an exorcist priest? Uh, it's the most Are feared by the devil. What's most feared by the devil? Yes. Jesus. Hey, Tara, first of all, the devil's a coward. The demons <laughs> are devils are they're cowards. They they puff and they huff and they, you know, but they're they're cowards. They're afraid of everything. Basically, but they're especially afraid of Jesus. They're terrified of Jesus. You even mentioned his name. I was the next I mentioned the same I mentioned the name of Jesus several times. The demons go. Stop mentioning that name. It's torturing me. So we mentioned even more. We mentioned even more. They said, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. They can't stand the name of Jesus, which is why we don't want you to use the name of Jesus as a cuss word or swear word. Jesus is a holy name. It's a sac mm -hmm. sacramental. It's, it's a holy thing by itself. Um, and of course, uh, next to Jesus, the Satan can't is terrified of Mary. When Mary shows up, They can't get out of the room fast enough. They are terrified mm. of Mary. They won't even use her name. They call her that woman. They that wow. woman. They're in there. So anything holy, uh, which is why in exorcism you use holy things. You say prayers, use holy water, relics, crucifixes. You use holy things, and they can't stand anything holy because they have rejected God and His holiness. Another thing I, I strongly recommend, we've learned this in our ministry, is go to confession. If you have not been to confession in the last several months, you should, uh, a pious lay person should go at least, I would say, once a month. And it's a wonderful grace. It, it scrubs the soul. 
we don't do exorcisms without having gone to confessions. I go to mm. confession every week. And I would say, I want you to go to confession. If you haven't been for years, if you're listening to this podcast and you haven't been to confession in years, I want you to get yourself to confession. What a wonderful grace and great protection. The devil hates confession. As a matter of fact, I think Father Gabriel Moore said, one good confession is better than dozens of exorcisms. Wow. We insist that people go to confession before we pray over them in an exorcism. Mm. Um, Father uh, Monsignor, how can you define a good confession? Well, you, you do your best to, to, to confess your sins. Now, if if you inadvertently miss something, mm. well, the Lord forgives it. But we do our best. We have to be honest with the priest and tell him our sins. You know, especially, of course, the big ones, what we call mortal sins. Oh. But but if you go to confession every week like I do, uh, hopefully you're not committing mortal sins every week. But <laughs> but, but still, we're, we, we're a sinful people. And so and then we started working on the, the, the lesser venial, venial kind, kinds of sins. But... but uh, Yeah, no, it's uh, we open ourselves to the Lord. We try to say, you know, Lord, what, what are, show me my sins, Lord, that I might confess them and work on them. Um, mm. There are lots of nice little guides you can use to prepare yourself for confession. You know, it, it gives you all sorts of things to look at and reflect upon in your lives. Yes, and some people are being too hard on themselves because sometimes after they go to confession on the other day they already commit mortal sin and then um, they feel so ashamed and guilty i mean what can you say about that father well there are people who are what we call scrupulous yes in other words when we've made a, a, a good confession done our best let it go let, let, let it go be at peace and then some people keep running back to confession every hour you know they want to... yeah yeah <laughs> it's scrupulosity it's that's that's not that, that's abusing the sacrament ah. you know? and then with those sorts of people we say you may not go to confession any more than maybe once a week at the most mm. yeah don't be going to confession every hour just make yourself feel better that's a form of an obsessive compulsive disorder scrupulosity ah. it's mm. a psychological disorder mm. once a month is It's already okay. That's what I recommend. A, 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 a pious Catholic. A pious a Catholic. Yeah. Now, some will go more, some will go less, but uh, you should definitely go at least once a year, my gosh. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I, I met some people recently who were, who were Catholics and were going to Mass and everything, but hadn't been in confession in two years or five years or ten years. I said, what, what are you doing? I mean, you're... you're, you're, you're overlooking a powerful moment of grace. Amen. Yes. What advice can you say to those um, non-Catholics uh, who always criticize us that we worship our Blessed Mother? Yes. So I will start with this. Jesus loves us so much that he wants to give us a mother. Mm. When you become Catholic, when you, when you become one with Christ... Para magkaroon ka ng access sa content na ito, be part of my Patreon group at i-click mo lang ang gold membership. Ma-access mo na ang buong video talk na ito. Alam mo ba na pag ikaw ay naging part ng aking Patreon group ay matutulungan mo ako makapag-produce pa ng mga high quality content na katulad ng pinapanood mo ngayon at sobrang makakatulong ito sa ating online evangelization dito sa ministry na ginagawa natin para mas ma-empower nyo ako makapag-produce ng mas marami pang content na alam ko na makakatulong sa inyong pananampalatayang katoliko. Thank you and God bless. So that's it. Thank you for watching this video. I hope na na-bless at na-inspire ka dito sa aking vlog. Make sure na i-like mo at mag-comment ka sa baba ng video na to at mag-subscribe ka sa aking YouTube channel para lagi ka updated sa mga bagong vlog na gagawin ko. At huwag mo din kakalimutan na i-like ang aking page. So this been Adrian Milag encouraging you to live your life to the fullest. God bless you more abundantly.